we're going to start with the. Um, uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're ready. Madam Madam Chair. Are we ready? Ready. Okay. All right. Thank you everybody for joining us in the afternoon part of our uh, special meeting on budget budget hearing. And so we're going to go back to the public hearing uh, in regards to capital outlay fund and other items. So I will turn it over to our CAO and then he can introduce. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, this item is um, item 45 on today's agenda. Um, we have our interim public works director, uh, Joe Hortel, here to give a presentation to your board and to the public um, during this public hearing. Uh, there'll probably be some overlap between the, ne the next three items, 45, 46, and 47 on our agenda, but obviously we'll, we'll listen to item 45 and then go through the normal process of, he of hearing each item. But uh, uh, Joe is here to, to give you a presentation. It'll be a PowerPoint presentation along with some uh, backup uh, data, um, paperwork and, and data as well. Joe? Okay. All right. And uh, yeah, thank you. As Ray noted, uh, actually, I'm going to combine 45 and 46 in the pres first presentation, okay. and then we'll stop, and then we'll actually walk through the CIP sheets for both, and then uh, jump into 47, the presentation, and with that. So I wanted to start the discussion or the presentation on the capital outlay fund, and just a reminder that as a part of capital facilities, it's one of those major uh, policy decisions that uh, local agencies make. It's where we go through and spend dollars of how we serve our constituents that are lasting investments. They're not one time uh, or uh, year to year. These are things that really can last a generation. And so it is important to think about that in the types of uh, work that we do on an ongoing basis. We obviously have to repair our facilities and so those aren't considered capital, those are in the operating budget. And you saw some of those as part of the presentations earlier today. We also do major repairs on our facilities. And so this, this last year when we replaced the boiler out at the main jail, clearly, you know, it's a major investment. It's something that uh, will last uh, years. And so it's considered a capital type improvement. We also do modifications to our buildings. These are like moving walls around and that. And those aren't normally considered capital. Again, back in the operating budget. We'll do upgrades, and so we talked this morning about the, the upgrades even to the computer system. We do upgrades to uh, HVAC, uh, electrical systems, so those can transition both uh, operating and capital, and clearly new facilities. And we'll talk today a lot about the new facilities or um, the major upgrades to current facilities. With our CIP, there are some real challenges that we face, and the board has talked about these in the past, and so I think it's good to kind of start with that, with some of the issues that the board is working through right now. One is that we really don't have an ongoing source of revenues that go in for capital replacement in our uh, general funded facilities. Uh, we have facilities that are aging, uh, that most of them are you know, well into their service life and are coming up on the needs for you know, roof replacements and uh, other improvements to the systems to keep them going. We are a growing community and that puts stresses on our system. We also are going through kind of a change in who we are for certain parts of the county as we're dealing with the rural to suburban as we do a lot of residential development around Hollister. And that, uh, that has uh, some consequences of how we plan and I actually wanted to go through and show a map that uh, Renee did looking at just our, it's lost a little bit, but this, of where we're growing that transition from uh, rural to suburban as we're building residential subdivisions around Hollister, we're now actually building a park system. We have you know, regional type parks, but we're now getting into the neighborhood park business and that's really gonna start changing how we go through and think about not just road emplacements, but you know, replacing park facilities as we go and are growing around the community. And so thinking about, um, these types of infrastructure now 
you know, we really got to be building into the future of how we're going to continue to support these. And let's get myself back. Um, we also have some real challenges with maintenance operations. Uh, we talked about that in the budget for the Sheriff's Department and, you know, where positions go and what are the real costs for running 24-7 operations. And, you know, when we don't fund those, those turning into capital costs. They turn into having to replace systems. And then just the staffing to deliver these systems, that it is uh, staff intensive to go through and do the design work, the kind of the thought process through it, the actual procurement. Oh, thank you. Uh, to actually bring those uh, projects along, and that's something I'm sure we'll talk about as we start talking about road projects. Um, we fund our CIP through the general fund to some extent, a lot of it out of development impact fees. Uh, we've been really aggressive in getting state and federal grants to help fund these, and in some cases that we'll talk about today, maybe a little too aggressive. Uh, gas tax dollars, other restricted funds, and as we go through and uh, start talking about whether it's a sales tax or things like that uh, happen here in the county, those are also sources for how we pay for capital facilities. Your capital budget is, I would say, is as important as your general plan in setting where we're going as a community. The general plan setting that big direction of where we're trying to get to. Your capital investments are really a tool about how you get there. And so what we've done, I think, pretty well is doing that year-to-year -year look at how we're going to go through and spend capital dollars. But because these projects take so long to go through and get up off the ground, and we've got, you know, certainly some poster childs of excessively long uh, ones, that you need to go through and really position yourself to be ready for when opportunities come up. And that's where the capital uh, improvement plan, where you're looking at a five-year look, is an important tool to do that. And so that's one of the things that we're working on right now is how to go through and really get a robust five-year look at where our revenues are coming for capital and then what are the projects that are most critical to move that forward and being able to uh, bring that. I don't have that for you today. That's one of the things that we're still trying to grapple with. But it is something that we're working on because I think it is a really important tool that the county is really going to need as you're dealing with the growth pressures that are going on. And here's why, and you can see the reasons there, but aligning with the impact nexus requirements, as we look at impact fees, that's a really important one, is if we really aren't looking at what are the kinds of infrastructure we're going to need to support the growth in this county, you know, we're really selling ourselves short as we set our impact fees. And so it's an important document from that standpoint. Um, as I noted, it, where we don't deal with uh, maintenance on an ongoing basis, it does turn into kind of major reconstruction, which then starts turning into capital type improvements, which is the expensive way to deal with it. Uh, we do need to go and look at things like the roof life of our buildings. Uh, technology, draw, or Parkway is one of the newest buildings in the county system, but it actually has got a roof that's going to need some repairs or replacements coming up. It is just, that is a life cycle that goes on. Uh, we've talked about the pavement uh, PCI, the pavement quality uh, review. That's one of the things we've put into the capital budget this year is to go through and move that forward because it's an important part of knowing where to spend your money wisely. Uh, electrical systems, we were talking about the library this morning. You have all of the technology in the library running essentially off one circuit breaker, which is designed for putting, you know, a couple of, you know, heaters in. It's not designed for running the entire library technology system. So there's stuff like that that, you know, we need to be addressing. And as I said, where we don't spend that money up front, it does lead into the problems. And so we've got in the budget this year looking at the infiltration of water into the main jail building and trying to minimize problems that could crop up with like mold. Uh, it also, the electrical systems we talk about when you blow circuit breakers, which happens. Um, we had a parks meeting when the library went dark because they, somebody plugged in a space heater this winter and shut down all the technology. Well, it puts loads on the sensitive electronics. You know, the computers aren't designed to do that kind of bam, everything goes off. And so that just adds cost for technology. Uh, so, you know, really it should be repairing rather than replacing. We have a question for you, oh, Joe. Yeah, I, I, uh, Joe, I, I want to go back to that, uh, the five-year concept, mm -hmm. uh, plant concept. and. You know, I'm very much supportive of that. Uh, we have that with the um, trying with our organizational structure, and we were present. Is that something that uh, is it be similar to what we're doing here with the county's uh, five-year plan, a a as far as the from a public works 
perspective? Right, uh, and so we and have you given it any thought as far as how do you put that together in your your office? Is it be you know through planning or or how are you going to do that? Well, typically it is done through the public works staff in most agencies, and then coordinates with all the different departments that depend on capital facilities. Uh, usually, it's a plan that goes through the planning commission because of its connection back to the uh, general plan and alignment there. So my expectation is, and I think that's one of the benefits of looking at an RMA, is really bringing more of those departments that are involved in delivering infrastructure all under one roof and being on an ongoing basis thinking about these sorts of things and not on a once a year or once every five years think about it. It really needs to be on an ongoing basis that you know, we're thinking about how our infrastructure, are we building the right infrastructure and how we're going to finance it and how we're going to negotiate for it. Uh, so this is basically a, your introduction to the idea to this board, and at some point we would have it agenda, yeah. as I would assume, to discuss on what type of framework we have it. That's my goal. And the county has had one in the past. I think just as the recession hit, it's one of those things that got set by the side. And we do have requirements within the different impact fees for us to do five-year plans and accounting uh, for that. Um, I'm trying to go through and get those reconciled so we aren't doing individual things, but they're actually kind of doing this multiple things one time and not having to kind of replicate it over and over. So that's the goal with that. We also do some of that with the CSAs where we'll go through and do some forecasting on it. So it's happening kind of sporadically, but it's not happening on a holistic manner. So that's, I just want to try to bring that back together again. Okay, that's good. I appreciate that. Um, so I wanted to go through and give a kind of high level of what's in the document that you received of the, the one-pagers for each of the capital projects. And so I'm going to kind of talk through on topical areas. So I wanted to start with roads. And the first one, and this is where I talked about where maybe we were a little too aggressive at going after some dollars, is that we are proposing a staff to drop the Union Road safety improvements off the CIP. It was one where we... Um, got a grant for about $400,000, but uh, the cost to do that project far exceed that, and as we're looking at where we're going to spend our local dollars that are really scarce, it's one that it's really hard to justify that over a bunch of other projects that we've got in the hopper. So as we go through individual sheets, I can talk about that. The pavement management uh, software, so I've got that uh, is one we've put into the budget. We talked about that as dealing with our deferred maintenance and pavement, that it's a good critical investment to compete for other dollars. On an equipment standpoint, there are a couple of things that the first, a low boy hauler. So this is to give us better deployment of how to get a, our heavy equipment around the county. We are a very large county with uh, kind of sparse roads moving back and forth. So in some cases to go 10 miles as the crow flies is a 50 or 60 mile trip. Uh, driving our road graders on that really puts a lot of wear and tear on them. Uh, and so that's one of the things we're looking at is being able to not have to drive our heavy equipment, uh, but actually put it on the back of a truck and move it to where we need it. Uh, the second item is the road grader is that uh, we have three of them. Uh, two of them are gonna come up on air district regulations where because it's older equipment, they, we're going to have to make some decisions about how to deal with that, whether it's replacing engines, replacing the graders. Um, as it turns out, actually one of them is off now to get its transmission rebuilt, uh, just getting hauled off. For, it actually costs us $600 to get it hauled to the shop to go get it worked on. Um, so it's, we're trying to get more life out of it, but it's got a couple of years before its service life is going to come up. And so we are proposing to do one this year and to then look at probably a couple of years out to do the other one. Um, the other one that's old is also its transmission is now starting to make the same noises that this one did about three months ago. We're also looking at the equipment we use uh, to maintain our roadways and the parks, and so we are proposing some uh, equipment for mowing. Joe, if yeah. you could go back to that one. Uh -huh. The pavement management software, do we know a, an approximate amount? Of I've money? budgeted uh, 600000 out of the equipment fund for it. Uh, we had done an earlier estimate for the San Juan Oaks project at about $300,000, uh, but that was a year ago. What, uh, why I put six hundred is when we talked with the city of Hollister as they were working on their project, similar sort of thing is that they were putting a, a larger number than uh, we originally put with the San Juan Oaks. So I wanted to go through and kind of 
aim a little bit, at least put a little bit of room in there so that we're not coming back to board three or four times as we work it through. So we're refining it, but right now I'm putting 600000 That sounds like a lot of money for software. Well, it's not software. It's also, it's also including hiring a firm to come in and assess all of our roads oh, okay. or to hire staff to go through and do the assessment for those roads. Okay. So it's, it's the entire project rather than just a software acquisition. And, and for the um, tractor mowers that you said mm -hmm. one of them had to be hauled. The grader. Or the grader. Is that um, for repairs? Yes. Right now we're repairing it. But do we have anybody locally that, that, that can do those repairs? Because I'm assuming that $600 was to take it out of town? Yes. Because there's not really a whole lot of repair. Uh, but they, they charged a lot of money. I mean, I'm hoping they're right. not going any further than that. We like go, because uh, it's specialized equipment of finding the dealer that services that piece of equipment. Okay, and that's so that's part, what it is. Then. Yeah. All right. And it, um, we do shop around and try to find local, um, like getting hydro, hydraulic hoses and things like that, as we can do more of that. But to actually go rebuild the transmission, I think this one's going up to San Martin, to where the Caterpillar dealer is up there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Joe, the money for this slide did not come from general fund, did it? No. So if we did, if we sat there and said no, we don't want to buy a low boy hauler. It stays in the equipment fund. General fund, and we're not going to be able to hire staff with it. Right. It, it's money that came from other sources. This is a development impact fee for heavy equipment. So they're in the fees that we charge on development, there is a set aside for heavy equipment. That is one of the things I do want to look at in the future is actually can we go through and um, based on how the ordinance is written, can we use some of this money to go do pavement management, pavement uh, repair? Uh, I think there is some ability, but it, there's some work that I'd have to come back to the board on to do that and certainly working with Matt and his staff on that. Okay. But right now it is segregated solely for heavy equipment. Okay. Thank you. Now, Thank you. One more question, Joe. There was a time when there, our equipment was in South County for, for the Correct. purpose of not having to haul them every time. Mm -hmm. And it, what's wrong with that? Well, <laughs> I don't know of any equipment in North County. Because the, the West County and the North County have to share. But uh, I, I know that that was done for efficiency and, you know, to save money. Is that still being done? Do yes, we still have? Uh, to some extent. So we uh, pre-position equipment down in, like, Pinoch Valley, and then we don't do so much on Highway 25 because most of that is Caltrans maintained okay. roadways. But Pinoch Valley, that's us all the way down. So we normally keep a backhoe out there. We keep material stockpiles and then also a grader down there. But like even cycling it back for maintenance is that we've got to drive it all the way back, send somebody down and then drive it all the way back with two vehicles. So with the low boy, I can send one person down to grab it and bring it back and re actually re-swap equipment that way. Okay. And then we also position here and then um, normally out and towards the west side, uh, a grader out that way. Too. I don't have one. Yeah, I know I have I one. <laughs> anyway, any other questions? Of Joe? Okay, Joe, I, I, go ahead. I, I, oh, I have, have a question. question. Yeah. Um, so we have three graders. I know one was in real poor shape, yeah. and and two that probably need to be replaced because of uh, error. So, uh, so at this rules. point, we have one that's in pretty good shape, and then two that are older, and so they're similar generations, not the same year, but pretty much. Yeah. And so one of those is starting to fail with the transmission. That's the one we're fixing. And the second one, we're, the sounds it's making, we're expecting it's going to be in the next year. We'll have that same problem. So the, the one that we're fixing with the transmission has a good engine that complies yes. with uh, AB32? Well, we think we can get a couple more years out of it, but it's one that we're doing that calculus that at some point we know because the air rules, we're going to have to deal with modifications or replacement. So right now, the cost, I think it's about $12,000 to, to repair it versus a quarter million to replace it, we think it's a good investment to keep fixing it. Yeah. But at some point, we know we're going to need to do it. You know, a thought that I have, you probably grade based on a, on a season, maybe four or five months out of the year. Um, yeah, it's, we'll grade, it's we're sensitive. grading right now. and then you know, yeah. We have to keep a, one or two graders. I, I think the county needs that. But um, does it make sense to lease equipment? Uh, just for the season, and then you turn it back to the dealer, and here's your equipment, and your deal you have new equipment every year. You don't have to maintain it. You don't have to, you know, you mm -hmm. the next year you get a, a, a 
brand new piece of equipment and you, it's dependable? Um, I think that is something that we look at when we do similar things where we swap equipment with the city so we don't buy the same things. Um, I think the challenging part is going back to the sources of dollars is that with the equipment fund, the, it doesn't set up for leasing of equipment, it's for the purchasing of equipment. So it's just our hands are tied a little bit more than would make sense. But it's again, it's an impact fee, so it's trying to, it's dollars to deal with that impact on a permanent basis rather than a reoccurring basis. Yeah. yeah. So that's the difference. For ways to free up some money for pavement maintenance. And, and it is where we look at of contracting with firms like Granite to go and actually come in and just bring the equipment, bring the staff, and go do it. And that makes a lot more sense than us trying to be specialized, you know, pavers, for example. Yeah. Is that okay. That's their world. All right. Sure. So on the parks, I think there's some uh, really good improvements that we're proposing in the CIP of reservation system so people don't have to come visit us uh, to reserve um, Bertha Briggs and the others. We're looking at adding additional restrooms out at Vets Park, uh, as well as hooking up the current restrooms to the sewer just to improve the experience for the customers and get much better utilization of that important facility. Uh, we're going to be doing lighting out at Vets Park uh, in the parking lot. Uh, and, and now we've got the well on track is to go through and start rebuilding the infrastructure in the park itself for water because it, there really is no mapping. It just kind of runs underneath fields and buildings. It's hard to maintain. And then we are looking at uh, a replacement for the grounds tractors out there, which would allow us a lot better utilization. And again, not have to move um, big heavy equipment uh, out to the park. We actually would have smaller park sized pieces of equipment we could use as we grow our park system. And one more one uh -huh. question on this. Uh, the, re the park, the regional uh, yes. park, has its own funding through a different source. So that's why that's not in here. Well, it, so we already have appropriated in the, uh, for the regional park in the capital budget. So I'm noting where the changes were is that we do have money already appropriated for land acquisition with the regional park and finishing up the IR. And so we can talk about that as we go through the individual sheets, but we are moving forward with some land acquisition, uh, getting an appraiser on board so we can pick up uh, some of the land to move that forward, which is partly why I put the tractor, because we now have to mow those lands. And now that we're buying land, we actually have to maintain them. And just for a side note, if you didn't know, the board here didn't know, the high school has closed their swimming pool uh, indefinitely because it's so old and needs major repairs. <coughs> and so yeah. just to say that that's, there's more need now for a regional type uh, facility that could perhaps have um, a swimming pool and the, the fields and all of that that is much needed in our community. Actually, maybe an opportunity to advance that discussion, yes. Oh, pardon? There may be an opportunity to advance the regional park discussion yes, exactly. about shared uh, facilities. Chair, um, I, um, I'd like to bounce an, a question to my fellow supervisors, and, and that is that uh, we all supported the regional park, uh, and, and it's proof is in the money that we set aside for purchase of, of, of land. And, and and I, I, I beg the question of um, when do we start addressing uh, parks on, on the west side of Hollister, the east side of Hollister, the north side of Hollister? Uh, are we all going to put all the money into the regional park, or, or are we going to distribute it fair among the entire county of San Benito? Well, because the regional park has, I don't know that we should that this is a discussion for now, but we should bring it up later, you know, later okay. because it, it is the regional park is intended to go, including the west side, all the way to San Juan Batista Aromas and south um, to Hollister Hills, if I'm not mistaken. So eventually it's going to supposedly service the entire county on this side, obviously. Yeah. Well, uh, but yeah, I think that that's we should be discussing. We should that. be discussing on the future. Yeah, I, I, because I agree. once the land is acquired, then we really have to plan out how it's going yeah. to be developed. All so. right, fair okay. enough. Thank yeah. you. And, yeah, I, I've been advocating that r right along uh, for Supervisor De La Cruz. You know, he, that Briggs uh, Brigantino property yeah. is is there, and it's just laid out, looking for a, just a little bit of modest investment. And I think if we're able to acquire that land that, you know, off of uh, uh, Cienega, and, and that's the beginning of the river, tr uh, river park, tra yeah, uh, trail. River trail. And mm -hmm. that connects the two parks and kind of uh, 
really uh, it it needs to be in, it made the investment, yeah. and uh, so I, I think that comes together real real fast if we're able to acquire that property below the high school. And it's going to be about yeah. connectivity to connect all the parks that are already there with each other. So, okay, and, and that goes back to my earlier point that a CIP that's looking at that five-year horizon out is really an important policy planning tool. And I went back and I put up the slide that Renee uh, did or his uh, GIS layer because that's why we uh, wanted to put this together. And so it's showing the new development and where we're putting parks. And so here's the regional park on the high school. But as you know, as we're intertwined with the city of Hollister and where they're growing and where we're growing and, you know, a park, uh, a resident doesn't notice that there's a line down the middle of the street that this is counting this as city, that we really need to think about how that whole system operates. And so thinking about, you know, where are the deficiencies today and where's new development happening, because that's the reality of how we're going to pay for the new park facilities. You know, where are those opportunity places that we need to think about uh, acquisition or being strategic when development applications come in to say we want a five acre park here or you know we want the money because we're going to do a five acre park across the street or two acre it is important also to distinguish that the regional park is serving kind of those regional type services it has neighborhood park cap capability but it's really neighborhood park for what's right around it um, you know there are neighborhoods here in the community that don't have neighborhood parks and that's part of the challenge is how do we go through and come back and provide that tot lot green space for the residents that they don't have today, how not to duplicate what the city's doing, you know, to kind of work together there, but be strategic about that. So that's really what we're talking with the Parks Commission now about is to get them thinking about that. We're bringing in development applications using this as a tool to kind of start knitting all that together. So I think it's a really important point for the board to be thinking about is, you know, we have a very important role in doing that. And so I, would, so I want to bring kind of some tools to help us have that conversation so that we can, you know, think about what do we put into next year's budget or is it three years down, but to start, you know, put that placeholder there. Uh, ma Madam Chair. Yes. And I guess, Joe, um, if you look at the, I mean, I haven't seen the entire uh, uh, budget for your CIP for parks facility. Does it include the Brigantino, the Brigantino uh, project in your CIP report? Uh, not this year, no. So, so... The, see, the thing is, the more we go in time, the less likelihood that it, it's going to be done. And the year well, keeps rolling forward. So let me five clarify years, and make years. sure it's kind of with the right Brigantino, because there is a Brigantino property that we're dealing with on development. But it, my understanding, this is the one by the river up by, right. Uh, right. behind the city. trust company. On, uh, yes. in the, yeah. on 4th Street. Yeah. 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 Okay. It's a city, uh, a city park. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And, and that even makes it better, because there's a, I mean, I'm willing to bet the city's willing to say, you know what? That's our property. It's out in the county. We want to do some type of partnership with you guys that connects the regional park to exactly. to the Brigantino Park. Mm -hmm. And that's the conversations I've had with the city managers, because there's a couple of them where we're doing stuff where they have a park and we're going to build a park right next to it. Is how to actually develop that as a joint facility, you know, so that it's maintained once um, that we you know master plan it together. So I think there's a lot more opportunities through the intergovernmentals to start thinking about this. And it's, I think we've planted the seeds with the development coordination conversations that are going on. That's, you know, again, partly why we put this together was to go back to those types of venues to work with the city and saying, here's what we're thinking about. Here's what's coming down the road. You know, here's what we've got to go be fixing. So, I, so there's a lot more that's got to happen there, but this is trying to kind of put a foundation for that to happen. Well, on a very miniature, thank you, Madam Chair, uh, you know, example is what my friends are here from San Juan, what, the, what we've been able to work with San Juan, the county and the school district to provide, you know, uh, enhanced parks in San Juan. Yeah. And uh, we have an idea, hopefully the board will support a little bit later when we go through the, uh, the list. But those partnerships uh, work real well. They do. And I believe we, we could really put up uh, something to be Samuel County, City of Hollister could be very proud of with the regional park tied in with the Brigantino uh, area. And uh, with all the parks, actually. Yeah. You know, they, there they should be bike trails leading every park into the regional park and vice versa so that people have connectivity and uh, you have more. You get more bang area. for the buck, too. That exactly. Way. Thank mm -hmm. you, Joe. Mm -hmm. and, uh, All right, there we go. 
So um, we're also looking at a funding a permitting system phase one for development services, because right now there really isn't a permitting system with Excel spreadsheets. Um, and then just looking past this fiscal year, so it's that five-year look out, these are, there's two slides here of things that, and I'm not going to read all these, you can read them faster than I can, but of just things that, uh, as we've talked with different departments and talking with my staff, things that we need to be thinking about that at some point we're going to have to deal with. Um, you know, the EOC relocation and having an operable EOC is going to be really important. You know, the, the waterproofing I talked about, um, countywide phone system, just, and you know, we've got a really antiquated, expensive phone system that we need to find a way to uh, move on with. Um, repaving projects around the city or around the county. Uh, library expansion was talked about this morning by uh, Marty. Um, clearly something we've got to figure out to do. Uh, and then stuff even around this campus here of how do we go through and deal with what public health is going to do, is that, you know, how library fits into that, um, you know, the future needs for the administration parts of the building. So we need to go through and kind of be thinking our way through some of this. And so wanted to close with, you know, the importance of building that five-year CIP is that you know, with everything, resources are scarce, so we, there's always a lot of pressure from what is kind of that loud voice in front of you at that moment. Um, that, that's always a challenge to stay focused on where we need to get to, where we want to get to. Uh, this is going to help you identify where the funding gaps are and how do we go and set our impact fees. Scoping projects as new development comes through, it becomes a little bit of that list that we negotiate with, with developers, and even down to dealing with the city and the tax sharing, you know, the importance of that. So at this point, I was going to go through and jump into um, the discussion on the uh, individual projects. I'm not going to go through and kind of read every one of these, but I am going to kind of give a just a quick thumbnail where we are. Louis, if you could turn the lights back up. Yeah. Uh, Supervisor Munzer. Oh. Joe, I don't know if you're going to go into it in detail, but before we leave this presentation, can you go into the Union Road Safety Improvement Project? Absolutely. What it entailed and what we're dropping? Yeah. Uh, so it's one of the ones I'll, it's in here, so I'll cover that. You, you will touch on it? I, yeah, I'll touch on that. Okay, that I, actually is, I want to make sure we're really clear as staff with the board okay. what that means, then, what we're looking long, at. As long as you touch on it yeah. sometime in your presentation. Then. So um, we do have a number of bridge projects that are, are back moving again. Um, we spent a lot of time in the last three months with uh, bringing in some outside help to help with uh, accounting and working with Caltrans. Uh, we've gotten all but one of those back on track. Uh, with Caltrans, we're working on the last one right now to get some invoices back to them by the end of the month to kind of get them moving. Um, so it's been good it, from a training standpoint of our staff of how to go do that as well as um, building some confidence of Caltrans and our ability to move forward with projects, which I thought was really important to do. So ANZAR is one of those that's starting uh, spun back up. We'll be finishing the CEQA process on that one. Um, the low water crossings on page two, we are having to really rescope this one. Before we go, yeah. um, you know, I, I talked to Amon about the Anzar Road uh, replacement, and uh, have we got that worked out with the, the Aromas Water District as far as funding that, that pipe deck? No, that is one where the that district has not um, come forward with funding to do that. That's one of the things we've got to figure out before that bridge can move forward is, do we go through and play bank and- I think that was Rocks Road is what I'm referring yeah. to. I'm so sorry. Was, yeah, but it's- um, but The Rancho, we got the water line goes out right. to Rancho Larius. Right. We've got a pipeline also on Anzar on that one. That one we can fund or- Yeah. So that is one of the challenges of working through why some of these projects take a while is dealing with the utility stuff and not all the agreements are really clear that require the utility to actually replace things and if, like in the case of Rancho Larios, they don't have the funds to do it. They don't and and that's a big problem yeah. in taking these bridge projects and and uh, getting federal monies and you we got to pay for the, the pipe with it's substantial or right. somebody's got to pay for it. Yeah so that's part of that will hold up bringing some of those forward but we are moving forward to kind of start knocking off the problems that are those obstacles is to resolve, you know, identify them, scope them, and then find a solution and get them done. So that's on every one of these. We're now chunking through that. 
All right. When you find a solution, somebody give me a call <laughs> on those two bridges. Uh, so Rocks Road is the one that we are de-obligated on right now on. So that's the one we're working on getting back with Caltrans. Uh, on the low water crossings, we do have uh, some issues with the permitting agencies. Uh, the Regional Water Quality Control Board doesn't like the solutions we've come up with thus far because we don't have a lot of money to try and deal with these uh, crossings through rivers. Uh, they want big bridges and that's just not money to go do that. So we're continuing to explore some, I would say, is low-tech uh, engineering solutions to them to see if we can work our way through that. So right now, those are kind of in the lower end of my priorities of things to try and fix as we get, try to get the big bridges done. Hospital Road, uh, we've been in front of the board several times now with the real estate acquisitions, contracts. So that one is um, really starting to move forward on it. So we're uh, at this point going through the eminent domain process and getting contacts back from the property owner that had been raising some of the objections to find more middle ground. So. I think it's having its desired effect to move it forward. Uh, John Smith realignment. This is real, um, related to the uh, landfill. And so this is one where you had the landfill reserve putting $300,000 into it. Uh, we are dealing with tiger salamander on this in mitigation. So we're hoping with the Santana Ranch project and the mitigation bank that they're creating on their property. That's our plan is to use that as our mitigation. We are starting to look at maybe some other options if that doesn't get done in time, but we want to get this one back moving again, this roadway project. The engineering is done. It's just waiting on mitigation. Is, uh, Madam Chair, yes, please. if we, you know, the water districts in the city of Hollister are working on that urban uh, Hollister plant, and they're running into the same problem with the uh, mitigation bank. Right. Can we piggyback on, on their effort and maybe, you know, go in the unison on, on one, you know, payment to wherever the bank is and yeah, they're that's, solving that problem. That's our goal is to go and ride uh, the coattails of someone else instead of trying to create it ourselves. Um, so I don't think I've talked with the city as a part of their project, but there's been some others that are working on uh, CTS here in the area that they're working on solutions to. So we're trying to find whichever person can get through that first if they've got some extra capacity for us to go and join in with them to be done with it. Okay, and maybe you want to check with the water district to see if, how they're progressing with that because that's the hold up over there on the, you know, off of uh, Union Road. Okay, so mine will follow up on that one. Go ahead, Supervisor Mitchell. I'll just jump on my yeah. soap, soapbox for a minute. I don't understand why that's a problem. We're, we're picking up a piece of asphalt, moving it, you know, a couple hundred yards north and setting it back down again. I, I, I failed to understand why that's a, a uh, environmental issue that, or as big of an environmental issue as, as Fishing Game has made it out to be. But I, I yeah. know you don't have the answer, but I just I wanted to get on my soapbox yeah. on that one. And anyway, thank you, Madam Chair. And Joe, I know yeah. you prepared this uh, CIP program for District 4. Do the rest of us have one of these? So, <laughs> District 4 has all the important stuff and all the problem just child. I'd say that. Yeah. <laughs> Mine could be just two pages, Joe. <laughs> park. Okay. Just needs a park. You know, in, um, in, 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 in district realignment in a couple of years, we can deal with some of these issues. <laughs> okay. So, so Lime Kiln, uh, we're off running through the sequel process on that. Um, so you'll be seeing that one coming through shortly. Uh, Pinoch Road Bridge, we're getting ready to circulate the negative declaration. That should be on the July 21st board meeting. Uh, that one's been, I think I've spent my entire year here dealing with the property owner just trying to get that one done. So, but it, we found the holy grail and we're moving forward. Um, pay, uh, preventative maintenance uh, bridge programs, we have not done anything more with that this past year. Uh, the Rocks Road Bridge we were talking about, so that's uh, dealing with uh, getting it reactivated with Caltrans and then solving the pipeline issue. Though we are having discussions with Rancho Larias about their uh, sewage facility, because I have the regional board now visiting me with emails asking about that. So we'll have an opportunity for some more discussion. Okay. And that's dis District 2. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's it out there. The beautiful West Side. Yeah, it shows District 1, but it is. You can have oh. that. Oh. Okay, you can have it. 
Uh, Rosa Mabrata, my favorite bridge, we're going through the design and the environmental process right now. That got re-obligated, so it's back, uh, starting to move forward. Where's Rosa Mabrata? I don't recognize that. Which district <laughs> is that in? <laughs> I did say fine. <laughs> Uh, Selene's grade guardrail has actually got completed. We just were closing that out with Caltrans, so that's why it's still sitting in here. See, that's uh, how things get done in District 2. <laughs> Not, uh, you know, 4 has a lot of incomplete projects. 1 has one, but we, you, you we should, get things You sure this not in District 4? <laughs> District 4 goes up there. <laughs> it was only a guardrail. Uh, Union Road Bridge, we're doing the right-of-way um, acquisition uh, work or kind of the plans for that right now. Uh, and then we're also working on the uh, world of uh, getting ready for construction, so some of the uh, environmental mitigation that needs to happen with that. We're trying to anticipate obligations that we'll have when it, to get, actually get ahead of it. So our mind's been working with the consultants on that work. This will be coming back to the board for some amendments to the contracts with Biggs, the master uh, design firm on this, so that we can try and finish some of that stuff up. So that will be probably, my guess is August coming to the board. So. Uh, Union Road Safety Improvements. So with this, and we'll see if I can read all the small print. So this was um, a stretch of road that is west of the bridge. Uh, the, over the river, and it's got some curves as it goes through um, where it's a kind of five acre, 10 acre uh, development, that area. Um, and we were looking at, could we go through and start widening some of the shoulders? Could we go through and um, help straighten it out a little bit through there? Uh, what we were finding though is that the original scope of $400,000 was not gonna be anywhere enough to go through and deal with the engineering, the actual construction. Because it's three-dimensional, the road is moving kind of up and down, as it's, and the right-of-way doesn't have enough room to accommodate all the kind of the connections. As you start widening shoulders and lanes, that you then have to transition back into the existing uh, topography. And so we were running into problems with uh, not enough right-of-way to go through and accommodate it, that dealing with uh, also um, potential environmental issues of capacity increasing on the road and any potential wetlands that might be deemed in the drainage ditches on the sides, it was becoming really problematic. And so this is one that, because we were gonna then have to start spending our money, Caltrans was not gonna put any more money into this project, uh, and they weren't gonna let us rescope it smaller, as we looked at it and said, were we gonna go spend our dollars on this project where if it wasn't our money, we wouldn't have scored this one at the top of the pile. You know, We wouldn't have used our money straight out to do it. Um, so we're saying, kind of put this aside until we do the ultimate, the traffic impact fee, which is gonna do a widening for Union Road um, as a project, that that makes, I think, more cost-effective sense to go do that. And that as we're looking at, especially all these bridges, one of the things we're working through right now is how we cash flow all this. Even though we may have 100% reimbursement on bridges or 88% uh, reimbursement, we are having to front those dollars. And when you're looking at a $20 million bridge, $10 million bridge, you gotta go through and kinda make sure you get reimbursements going on a real regular basis, which is why we've been spending time this year on getting better with the Caltrans reimbursements. Even with that, if I'm still billing every month, the cash flow for that is pretty intense, and so we're trying to keep within our uh, budget with uh, the capital fund and not burn through our local match dollars prematurely. And so that was our concern with this, is we were gonna burn through local match dollars, which we were gonna to need to actually deliver those bigger road projects. So uh, you're going back to why you do a five-year CIP is, you know, how to prioritize the things you have to what you really wanna achieve, and this is one that we felt didn't fit to the mix of highest priorities, scarce resources, so it kind of fell off the list. What about the grant? Where does, we just don't get it? So we won't get it. We'll actually have to pay back the state some money, but it's one that it's, I think we were saying it was 2200 uh, right now. It, we haven't spent a whole lot of money on this. We've done some initial work on We're kind of, we're gonna close the books on it. We'll spend a little bit, but it's one I felt it was better to spend a little bit of money that way than to get really deep in this and then kind of never get out of it. Because if, if we went and did all the engineering work on it and got really deep into this, we'd have to, and then didn't do that project, we'd have to reimburse even more money back. So it's one I'd, I felt to stop the bleeding quick. Okay. And it seems like there we had a property owner, and I don't think it was at 
Somerset, but one of these where I think there was a, either a driveway or a road yeah. off a bend. They wanted some um, guardrails put up because mm -hmm. the, the cars were not negotiating the terms. And I don't remember if that got done yeah. or if that was part of this project. Well, come, come on, come on. Come up, please. Thank you. Morning board. Uh, no, that was not part of this project. This was uh, this is bes between actually uh, Union Heights Drive and uh, the old Union Road when it actually intersects to the uh, Union. Uh, the area you're talking about is near Union Road Bridge, which we already put up some signs out there, Chevron signs. Okay, you've already dealt with yeah. the issue. Okay, no, that's all. okay. Thank you. I didn't want to drop this project, yeah. have, have that be part of it, and then have a. I just agree. to come back and fix it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Armand. Thank you. Um, but I, I, just for clarification, mm -hmm. what, what signs were, were put up? Um, and they were, they're new signs, and um, because I'm really concerned about that person's backyard. There's been like three or four cars that have ended up in their yard uh, and in broad daylight. You know, it's mm -hmm. not drunk drivers at 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I was really hoping that we got would get a guardrail, and what Steve, you know, Joe's predecessor, stated to me was that the Union Road um, realignment, the bridge, was to take care of that problem, and that we couldn't spend any money on it because mm -hmm. the bridge uh, will, you know, solve the problem. And correct. The bridge, the, the, the new uh, Union Road Bridge alignment will take care of that, that tight curve right now as exists today. So that will be resolved within a year or two when the uh, actual Union Road Bridge is going into construction. So that's going to be taking care of that, that problem with that area. However, what we've done initially, uh, we've done Chevron, and we did see a lot of uh, uh, redund you know, kind of redundancy of accident was going up in that area. And when we looked at it, we studied it, and we f realized that uh, it's at night, it kind of, and also in the, in, the, in the daytime, you can't tell where the road goes. And if you're going over the speed limit, you may not be able to control it. You either end up in the orchard or in that guy's property by the time you correct yourself. So that was one of the reasons that we put up uh, some Chevron uh, for the time being, and that has alleviated some of the, uh, the accident problem that we have in that area. Since, uh, since that's been posted. But uh, uh, the other problem with the, uh, the guardrail, and I mean, we haven't had any accident to, to say that this is still ongoing problem. So I would say that the, uh, the new bridge uh, will alleviate all that problem because the new alignment is actually, uh, go, goes away from the road, from, the, from the, the existing house on the corner. I, sh I sure don't want to hear, you know, from that lady again. Well, if they call you, let, let's, let us go and take a look at it and see uh, what we can do at the meantime. Uh, again, me and Steve talked about it, and um, again, w the correction we provided so far has, has, uh, has resolved some of the problem in that area, but if they call you again, if that become or if we see it on the accident, uh, uh, I guess database that we receive from uh, CHP, we will definitely uh, uh, take a different you know, right. measure on that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Joe. And then um, the Y Road Bridge, we're moving forward with that. So this is out by 101. Uh, that had a lot of delays tied to the redesign uh, as Caltrans looked at the flood flows moving through underneath the freeway in this bridge. Uh, we had to add an additional span so they actually got longer. So we had to go deal with Caltrans to actually rescope the budget, um, which grew as a part of that. And then we're also uh, the equipment that we talked about uh, earlier. Right. So that's the last page on that. The uh, half of it missing. I 
realize now what happened. This half of them got skipped down. So as it relates to the cap, so those are the roads. Related to um, the individual uh, capital facilities, we've talked about the parks reservation system. We're looking at something similar to what the city of Hollister is using uh, that would allow us to take credit cards and uh, make it a lot easier for the customers to see what's available, not have to come in and visit us at a technology parkway to um, sign all the paperwork. They could do that online. Uh, the pavement management system is on the next page, page 16. Uh, the uh, RMA, RMA permitting system, uh, this notes that it's uh, equipment funds. My plan is actually use development uh, fee revenues. That's something that should get built into the development program cost. Uh, what our permitting fees are is to pay for the cost of uh, running a permitting system. And it ultimately helps us achieve our public records uh, requests or obligations. The jail, uh, that is uh, moving forward. My goal is to actually come back in um, the uh, July meeting with uh, the next set of uh, agreements, the lease agreements, and uh, ideally the actual bid documents so we can approve for bid, going out to bid. Uh, we're working right now at DOF on that last piece. Behavioral health, uh, we've put an offer in on the land. I need to get the architect back working. Um, we did get an appraisal. It did appraise for value. So uh, that one, we're uh, moving that project forward. Uh, the county fire facilities was talked about this morning, Fire Station 3. Um, we are still looking at the location where ultimately it's going to be. Originally, we are looking out on Flynn Road. Uh, we are now taking a second look at uh, Fairview and whether we would put it out on the county site where Go Kids is at, as Go Kids is now uh, moving off of the property. So I do have an architect uh, spun up who's helping us with uh, that work. We'll be working with the city on that project. But Joe, has there been um, some sort of a, a, not survey, but a consultant that can tell us the, the difference in time from serving from that the response location? times. Response time. So that's one of the things that uh, we'll take a look at to see, you know, can GIS help us out with that? I don't have right now programmed in a uh, fire response expert. We'll work with the city on their runtime maps. Um, we do have data from the city in all the calls they've been doing. So Renee has that and has mapped actually looking at response time. I think even in looking at um, even rudimentary tools like uh, Google directions to go, okay, from this location to get to here, what's travel times? And just seeing the diff relative differences between those, I think will give us a pretty good handle without necessarily having to bring somebody in for a lot of money to answer that. But that is an important part of, you know, where's the right place Fair. to put it. And, and why, uh, what is it about Flynn Road? I thought we had already invested money in that and what happened? So, uh, Flynn Road is right now where the uh, where we last left it with the board. Right. So the architect I brought on board is looking at Flynn Road and then also looking at that concept. Can it go in other places? Flynn Road was um, worked well because it was really close to where the modular trailers were at. Uh, we went through the whole RFP process to acquire the modular buildings, and Calstar went and picked them up, and they're moving them somewhere else. They are redeploying them. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, as they, after they had bid it, they went through and says, um, you know, actually, the company's moving elsewhere. You know, uh, yeah, you go know, ahead. Yeah, we discussed it at the fire committee uh, to evaluate Rosa Murata. And, you know, in North County and the density of people that are up along Fairview Road, we thought that would be a little bit more conducive for a response mm -hmm. rather than, you know, coming out of the, the industrial park on, you know, and one of the main reasons why we picked Flint Road was the county owned the property. And, you know, when the discussion talk, uh, came around about Go Kids maybe leaving county owned property, well, why not take a look at that? And uh, Hollister Fire seemed very uh, receptive of that location and uh, it, it's got a good you know jump out towards uh, South County using uh, Fairview as well as uh, pretty good access throughout the entire North County and where you know quite a few residents live and so that'll come back to right. the board when you have more information yeah so we're just now starting to look at the, the trade-offs between those sites all right thank you and it's right now we've got um, 
$668,000 in the budget to go do that. Clearly, you can't build a fire station for that amount of money. So it's that was a predicated on a um, using the module buildings. But that is one of the things we're going to look at with Rosa Mirada is we do have existing buildings there with utilities that uh, that you know septic tanks and water system that could we go through and move in and deploy a, an equipment shed and get up and running quickly there. So that's one of the things we're going to look at. Uh, the courthouse renovation or the hall of records. Uh, we've got the architect on that. We've uh, met with the different user departments about space needs. Uh, that one's back with me to actually translate the space needs back with the architect and get moving on that one. Um, Geo waterproofing, we talked a little yes, bit about. We yeah. have a question, Jeff. Okay. It's more of a comment. And for the record, Joe, I really want to thank you because finally there's a project in logistic <laughs> being built. Oof. We were going to redistrict to get it, it oh. out. Oh my God. It's not, it's not lights, but it's a, it's a courthouse. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's office space. Um, you guys are just jealous. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, jail waterproofing, so we have identified a um, project out to work on the existing jail, which, uh, based on how it was built, uh, really low to the ground. It has suffered from the, a lot of years of uh, heavy rainfall and excessive watering of the lawn. It actually was bringing water into the building, so we fixed the watering of the lawn. The droughts also fix that too. We've also done some grades, but we do need to ultimately to get out there and actually waterproof the concrete block, which acts like a sponge, so it's pulling water into the building. Joe, can we go back to Habitat? I don't know how I missed it, but yep. that Habitat Bank project, if I remember, I've asked this question numerous times. The, the money that's dedicated for this can only be done for studies and for acquire, not acquiring properties. I do not know the answer to that question. This one has been kind of quiet lurking out there, so I'm aware that there's this money, but I, I couldn't tell you what that project is. I know that there was some sort of a study that was being done, and uh, it's just that it's sitting there. We really should be doing something with it, and, you know, maybe property in perpetuity, maybe something related to the regional park with the conservation. I don't know. Right. Well, it's one of those opportunities that is, it may, in dealing with acquisition of land for this, may actually be multiple use for other things, and that's how Santa Clara County is doing their whole habitat plan is yeah. park system, habitat, and how those work together. Uh, so kind of, again, you don't do one, 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 you do something that's better. Madam Chair? Yeah. Yeah. Ma Madam Chair. Yes. Um, I do recall having a conversation about this, uh, this plan mm -hmm. uh, with, um, with Gary and, uh, and planning. I don't want to put Byron on the spot. but. I, uh, I want to say that it was uh, certainly a planning issue, uh -huh. you know, as, 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 you know as, as far as this project and moving forward. A few years ago, we did use uh, some of the funds to do a, a HCP feasibility study. That's what it was. It was a and study. so we, we brought the feasibility study before the board. The board didn't want to take any action on it at that time. And so we had, have been looking for alternatives. It hasn't come up in a little while, but it's one of those ones, like, like Joe said, is out there. Um, we need to go back and relook at the ordinance that created the fund and uh, b be able to make sure that we can use it for the purposes that it was created for. Okay. And I think that was the issue, that it was, we were limited, but I recommend getting a college student to do some sort of a, a project uh, that's no cost to the county and see what's there and what are the possibilities, because that's, that's a lot of money that we could put to use somewhere in connection with everything else that we're planning at this time right. in our five-year plan. So thank you, Byron. Any other questions on this one? Madam Chair, if I may. Yes, uh, I, I would like to agendize this and bring it back to the board at a later date just so we can get clar clarification for this and kind of what we could do with that. Okay. That's okay Very good. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it, it, okay. and, and I know we're going to agendize it and everything, but is, is this something where we can purchase and this and then this land can be mitigation land, or is this two separate things? That's what I need to find out. We, okay, okay, so okay. And then I guess I'm, the my way memory I'm was it, my question is: Can that be looked into that yeah. we can purchase uh, mitigation okay. land? My memory was that this was an impact fee type thing, so it's money that was coming in from development for impacts they were creating, so we couldn't use it to go and buy something to solve another. You can't double dip with it okay. that way. Okay, okay. But I just want to. Yeah, yeah, a habitat conservation plan is that totally separate, ties in Totally to the, separate from mitigation. Yeah, but, but it could, okay. you're saying that Santa Clara kind of incorporated it all? 
with yeah. the parks and uh, we brought the parks district in the open space authority the county right. parks system into that the water district lands as a way to kind of build a bigger um, habitat you know area right rather than little pockets of, yeah. of conservation that wouldn't go too far and, and, and you know if I recall my my mind is slippery and I forget things one week to the next but we did have an agenda item on this it was when Gary was still our planning director it was a few years back or a couple years back and we had a long discussion about what we wanted to do with that money yeah. I remember so maybe we just have to direct staff to look back yeah. into the archives and look at those minutes but I remember it being very controversial and we had some disagreements <coughs> among ourselves yeah. So, yeah, but I think now that we're looking at a five-year plan, this is a good time to bring this yeah, yeah. bring this back. So, okay. Thank you, Joe. So uh, the landfill, we do have uh, dollars associated with expanding that. Um, that's one of the things is the integrated waste function kind of. We're uh, picking up the, all the parts of that. Um, I haven't done anything to date on this. So right now, again, I couldn't tell you what that project is. We've just carried it forward. Uh, the tennis courts in San Juan School, so I know this is one uh, that Anthony, you had yeah. some uh, interest in. I think we'll have some speakers talking about that one. Right. So I'll defer that for the moment. Yeah. You skipped the probation parking? I'm going to that one right now. Oh, you are. Okay. My pages may be flipped. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, did you have a question, Supervisor Patel, um, on the what, what, lighting first? When we go back to the, uh, the San Juan tennis courts, I'll um, okay. update the rest of the board on that. Um, so we are adding some new projects. One of uh, these is dealing with safety in our facility. So we're proposing uh, lighting in the parking lot for uh, probation to uh, help with that. The uh, resource recovery park, um, or the river parkway is actually one to talk about. So this is where you can see then in the 1516, um, there's $657,000 set for property and right of way. So we have appropriated dollars already for right, real estate acquisition. Where uh, are you, Joe? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm on page 29. Mm, page 29. Mine are I don't, yeah, these are No, it's numbers. a real small print on the bottom in the middle. What is the title? Uh, River Parkway. So 3000 820. Oh, got it. Okay. So in the middle of that page, you'll see uh, under budget property right away, and then under fiscal year 1516, $657,342 for uh, property acquisition. So we do have money set aside for acquiring land. So as we're talking about spending money on other projects, this money is here. So I think this is enough to get us, uh, as we're picking up the land around the high school area, that uh, will get us there or really close to getting it all done. And then as we start thinking about other properties, then we'd kind of keep adding to this bucket over time. But I think we've got the war chest we need right now to get going. Good. Okay. Um, generator Sheriff's Emergency Generator Sheriff's Office, that one is coming to the board uh, for bid approval uh, tomorrow, I think. Yeah, it's on tomorrow's agenda. And uh, we'll be up and running here in August. The uh, Vets Park, we're doing a new addition for barbecue pits and lighting, uh, irrigation. I talked to you about also the restrooms and sewer. So with that, I would suggest we take public testimony and then we can come back and talk about San Juan Oaks. Uh, that makes I think it's, yes, yeah, so, I mean San Juan, the tennis courts. Okay. Uh, we did skip over some of them. Do we want to finish them, like the probation, the radio project, and... Whoops. Uh, what did I miss? Radio pro. So we did the probation lighting. Uh, that's the safety improvements that's new for this year. Do that, okay. And then the radio project is some... Com we're adding on to uh, project. And I don't know. This is an IT one, so I didn't look at that one too close. But that's an existing project, so that's not a new one, so we're carrying that forward. Okay. Okay, then I'll go ahead and, uh, and open the public hearing. Thank you, Joe, for all that information. And I'll open up the public hearing so um, that anybody um, in Chair, the public. Before um, you open the public hearing, we'll going back to the uh, tennis courts in, at San Juan. I just, from my uh, position of representing. Uh, that district, uh, there's a change in in the uh, what they would like to do with this money, okay. rather than uh, have 
lighting for the tennis courts at the at the school. I think there uh, there's a change in the in the project, uh, which uh, I think we have some speakers here that would like to uh, propose that to the board, and I think it's a a, a great change. Uh, it's part a partnership between the the city, the school district, uh, on two different parks. First one is Baruti Park which is on 2nd Street. Uh, it's the a little, little community one. park. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the little uh, park down the street from the uh, community hall. Right. And uh, there's some upgrades, which I think we have uh, a couple of speakers that will describe that, as well as um, a change at the uh, soccer fields where the county has invested you know, some money uh, with the school district in, in the city of uh, San Juan and made soccer fields there. And there, the proposal there is to put in a little trail, an exercise trail, and um, I got the description right here. And staying within the same budget, uh, Supervisor? Yes, Marcella? staying within the $25,000 budget. And uh, it's, it's a number of different things, which I'll come back and give detail after the, you after know, the, the public, public speaks okay. on it. All right, then I'll go ahead and open the public hearing. Do you have speaker cards, uh, Clerk of the Board? Mr. Chair, yes. Uh, we have Sonora Vasquez who would like to speak on recreation. And it's Jen Dyson, who's 35, but supervisor can tell us. Uh, can you speak, Sonora? Uh, let me see. Uh, let me see where it is on the. Uh, what? N so it would be part of this uh, capital outlay, um, yes. part of this, this fund. Okay, very good. You may come up. Uh, Actually, because I'm wearing my uniform, I'm not able to speak and be recorded because then I represent the Air Force. But I Can you have somebody else speak for you because we don't allow any I'll, speaking? I'll, I'll, speak, I I'll speak for Ms. Very Vasquez. Good. Thank you. Anyway, um, she is the chair of the uh, Baruti mm -hmm. Park Project. And you know, what they're doing is doing some upgrades, changing out the sand and putting in some rubberized uh, surface, uh, which is, you know, the can't vote. animals cats tend to use sand as a litter box and and that's a uh, make a situation a whole lot better for the kids in uh, in the county and in San Juan Batista in particular and uh, the, the partnership is with the city of San Juan they're 100 percent behind this project uh, Ms. Vasquez uh, did call and uh, Roger wasn't able to be here this afternoon but uh, very supportive they've raised Eleven thousand dollars already uh, from the business community uh, in support of this project, and it's uh, you know it, it's pretty expensive. It's I want to say what's the total cost, Sonora? For the uh, you know what we're I'm sorry. I don't want to take yeah, any yeah. comments I, okay. because we don't allow anybody to do uh, that. It's a to. substantial amount of money, which half half of the the money that we have allocated for the tennis lights would be uh, a substantial. In, um, you know, need to complete this project, and they're going to continue to get community support to finish uh, the Baruti Park uh, betterment. Okay, uh, so eleven thousand has been raised. So out of the right. twenty-five thousand, how much would be used for the Baruti Park out of this budget? Half. About, about half. half okay. About twelve thousand. So about twelve thousand to go to right. the uh, for the and, Baruti Park. Okay. Yes, and then the other half of the the money would go to the uh, uh, the soccer fields. Which we have a, a speaker that would come up to speak on that issue. Okay. I'll let uh, Teresa come up. Madam Chair, it's uh, Teresa Lavinino. Lavinino. Hi there. Thank you so much for allowing us to present this. Basically. Um, um, my name is Teresa Lavanino with the San Juan Aromas Tennis and Fitness. And also, I'm with the um, San Juan Batista Strategic Planning. And what we've, we did is we looked at this. These funds have been sitting there for two years. And um, we hit Tony Haracha, who is heading this up, hit a little bit of a glitch in, um, in the fund, or we had to get architectural committee to come in and it'd be another ten thousand dollars and he felt he did not want to spend the county's money on architects he he wanted to um, 
pass this on to us right now, the, the two groups that are putting, putting in parks right now. And, and so what I'm representing is um, the San Juan School Sports Fields reno renovation. What we are going to be doing is right now that field is unsafe for the kids. It's got um, gopher holes, it's got weeds, it's un uneven surface. And so we would like, um, as the community's been fundraising, and we would like to renovate, renovate that field. There's several reasons. They, we've got a soccer, soccer um, league that's at, a, I think, about 130 kids right now, over overflowing on those fields that we have right now. So we need that extra field for soccer play. And, um, and then also, our, our group is planning a, a, bigger, a bigger picture. There's going to be fitness trails. There's going to be exercise equipment. There's going to be um, a nature preserve area. We're going to restore um, that river, the creek that goes by the, um, the soccer fields. And so there's, a, like I said, a bigger picture. But this is our first phase. We have to um, fix this soccer field and get it into playing condition so that the kids, um, well, the community. Because right now, we've got the, the school, the students at the school, we've got the soccer league, we've got the, um, the uh, youth that are playing soccer that need to practice on this field. And it's as, uh, as uh, Yusinda <laughs> had said, um, it's hazardous. You know, uh, kids are spraining ankles, whatever. So that's why we want to do that. We need these funds to complete this project. Now, the funding would be for the repairing of the field or for a trail on the field? Actually, the funding would be for the renovation of the field. And um, we've got several. I just want to share who we have working with us. Um, the renovation, um, we also are going to. Um, we have uh, Sean Novak from the Water Resource Association. He thinks this is a great project. What we're going to be doing is renovating or uh, retrofitting all the sprinklers there. So we're going to be cutting back on the watering um, to address the drought uh, conditions. Um, also upgrading the, the clocks so it's on a weather, um, a weather system so that there's less water being used during the year. Um, Let's see, what else do I want to say? Um, and we're also uh, working with Greener Grounds Landscape, who is going to add to this renovation a special additive that's going to, um, it actually collects water. Uh, you, you aerate the field, it collects water, so you're using less water. So as far as covering the drought, we're, we're doing whatever we can to cut water use. But like I said, if, First of all, first step is we have to renovate this field. It's, it's in dire need for the kids at the school, the soccer players, and for us to continue on with the rest of this And do you have part. a dollar amount to that project? Um, the dollar amount, total dollar amount is um, 20, 22,560. We've got a donation from our our landscaper brought down brought his bid down to 19,000 and we've got donations of 7,892 we're at a point right now is all we need is $12,666 if we split these funds with both both parks then we're off by $160 and we we can raise that okay so then you're looking at only two renovations one to the Verity Verity Park and one to the soccer field. That's it. Okay. Right now and with that these would take funds. Up the twenty five thousand. That would take up the twenty five thousand. And it's all community driven, which is sort of exciting because the community's coming out to make this happen. And I just want to sh share who our partners are though. This um, definitely behind us is the San Juan um, the Aroma San Juan Unified School District. We've got the San Juan Aromas Tennis and Fitness. We've got San Juan Batista Strategic Planning, San Juan Soccer Association, the newly formed San Juan Batista Youth Commission. And um, they, they have a plan of soccer, um, soccer festivals and also they are in, they, they want to plan a sports complex. So this, San Juan being such a small community, 
we have to share share all of our facilities and so for us to all come together and and make this a shared joint effort we also have the water resource association tony santos with greener grounds and um, reach has also been working with us reach of san benito county so i i think we have a really good partnership and and the school is ready to um, step up on their side of it. Well, that's nice leveraging of dollars, that's for sure. Okay, you thank know, you very much. And we'll, um, any, uh, Supervisor Batella, before you, you go, let me see if there's anybody else that wants to speak okay. during this. Um, any other speakers for the public comment? In regards to any of the items on the capital improvement program, this is a public hearing for this, this whole thing. Okay. Can I say one more thing about Veruti Park? Veruti Park is also, it's um, um, Rotary of San Juan Batista is backing them um, also. And they put in a brand new fence in, into the, um, on, the, on the park. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, any other comments, uh, public comments before I close the public hearing on the Capitol? And then you can, yeah. we can, you can speak on, on that. Okay, I will then close the public hearing and Supervisor Patella. Yeah, I, I'm really excited about the, the changes in, in the use of this money. It's a impact a, a, a broader span of the population. We talk about in our parks plan to uh, try to meet diversity. Um, this is a, a, a community driven effort. Uh, and it, it meets a broad spectrum of people that it's uh, served. You know, the Brewery Park is a great place uh, to have a barbecue on, a, on, on any given afternoon. And you see young uh, kids able to play in a safe environment. I think the, the changes at the soccer field, uh, working with the Water Resources uh, Board, and I just happened uh, bump into their meeting at uh, the uh, vertical a couple weeks ago and, and planning that at, for you know water uh, retention in the grass will you know make that field stronger eliminate the weeds and the gophers and things like that that makes a, for a safe field for the kids to play on plus the exercise uh, uh, stations uh, along that trail. It, it, everybody of all ages are be able to uh, take advantage of that. And that could be a model of what we're going to do here in Hollister at the resource, uh, you know, the regional park. And I see connectivity with that and the, because there's a right. river going by. And uh, one of the things I want to bring, bring up before, you know, hopefully the board supports the change is I was talking with Sarah and she expressed a little concern about the San Juan Fields monies not being able to use it as impact park money. Uh, I'm going to put that out there. Uh, I think we absolutely could use those funds for that purpose. Uh, the growth that is going to occur not only in San Juan the, the, the last couple of years that uh, we've seen, you know, new residential growth in, in, in the town. But also, I think Del Webb is going to have a tremendous impact on both the city of Hollister, but particularly San Juan. And uh, we need to have park facilities um, able to accommodate, you know, the you know people that are coming to our community. And I'll ask Joe, Joe, do you see any issue with this request? Well, and that's why I put the slide back up here about how we think about capital facilities. I think of how the project was being described today fits closer to those major repairs or kind of major upgrades to existing facilities as opposed to just being maintenance and repair sorts of things. Um, so that's the part I would ask for a little bit of flexibility from the board. I understand the objective and I think the dollar is enough to kind of between the two projects to make it all work and if there's the need to maybe move some of the crowdsource dollars between projects to make that a, kind of fit within the ordinance that we just have as flexibility of staff to work on that and bring that back to the board. Okay. But I think so if we vote on this, we can just modify. This. I would clump them as we'll take this uh, tennis court lighting project out. We'll put these two in as kind of a package of projects right. and that they would have show local money coming in. It would show park money, park impact fee money coming in 
and then as we do individual projects and agreements, we would kind of parse out how that gets spent that way, if that makes sense. It does. Sure. Any, the Supervisor Munzer and then Supervisor Bevis. Oh, with a W. Okay. Um, and I'm just throwing this out, and it, and it doesn't matter if, if the board doesn't go along with it, but I know the Air District, we often give grants out, and then the, the money is not utilized. And then, we're, in fact, Wednesday, we're, we're taking back some money from grants that were never utilized. Do we want to put a time limit? And I don't care what the time limit is, but just so that this money is not if it doesn't get utilized, we can come back at some point and say, okay, you know, you, you've had your, your shot at doing this. For whatever reason, it didn't happen, and, you know, we're going to take the money back and use it elsewhere. So that's one suggestion. The other, the other thing I want clarification on is on the soccer field part of it, is the money just to renovate the existing soccer fields, or is it tied in with this hiking or fitness trail? You may come up if you'd like. Okay. You have, there's a question for you. Thank you. At this time, it's just for the renovation of okay. the, the field. And, and having served on the Vets Park Commission and seeing kind of what Vets Park has metamorphosed into, it, it's being overutilized. And I wanted to make sure that the same thing wasn't going to happen here, where if you got half a dozen different soccer games going on and then somebody trying to use the fitness trail, they're getting hit by soccer balls or kids are running into them, that type of thing. So I'm sure you'll design it so that does not happen. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, and Supervisor Rivas and then Supervisor De La Cruz. Yeah, I think you know, I think uh, the slide that that uh, is that stood out to me is um, the slide where he talks about um, the building a five-year um, CIP and, pri and prioritizing our, our investments. Because clearly, based on our districts, you know, we all have a different priority. Um, uh, and for me, in my district, is obviously, um, I guess you would say it ties into the to the River Parkway because it's about the Nash Road closure, which is an issue that we're going to be talking about tomorrow. Um, but the reason I bring it up now is because under the River Parkway, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, when our staff, when we talked to, with the city and, and with the school district about the county constructing uh, a bypass. Is that included in this anywhere, Joe? I want to make sure I give an accurate answer on that one. So we have, uh, at this point in the River Parkway project, we don't have construction dollars allocated. Okay. So we've only gone through to get the IR, to do some initial land acquisition, some of the design work. Okay, so that way it wouldn't fall under property or right of way? Uh, no. No, okay. So as a part of like the agreement for Nash Road where we were talking about building the bypass, that's one of the things that until we actually have the land, it's hard to go through and start programming for those gotcha. types of things. So okay. it didn't get dollars put to that yet. Okay. But that's why we want to get the land sorted out. Yeah, right. and the land would get sorted out with the high school, uh, and that would kind of get the ball rolling. Right. Yeah, gotcha. so. And so then we would just add it to, I'm assuming, this. Correct. Uh, this and project. that's the why you go through. And even though you're doing a five-year CIP, you do it every year. So you keep adjusting where some projects slide because there's delays. Others you can put in, and, you know, they weren't on the list, and they're now year one. Thank you, Joe. And Supervisor Dela Cruz? Yes, I, I really And so my question would be is that I've been concerned about the Fallon Road, um, and I don't know if it fits under here, the Fallon Road Fairview uh, intersection where they probably have an accident, a couple accidents a, a month, <laughs> uh, several accidents a year anyway. 
And that light, um, traffic light, is that, where does that fit into our capital improvement? Or, so it's, or does it? Right, of putting a light at Fairview and Fallon uh, is not in our capital budget at this point. It's one that, I don't know, from a traffic, imp yeah, Ramon, why don't you take a crack at it? Well, I'm just wondering if we're going to do a five-year plan that maybe we could include a project like that on down the road. And I know we're going to come back with that that plan, and I just want to make sure that it, it it's heard. Uh, as part of the uh, uh, highway safety program, we nominate projects. And uh, Fallon Fairview was, intersection was nominated back uh, a year ago, and Caltrans actually, uh, we were not uh, the recipient of the grant. So uh, we're going we're gonna to keep try till we get one. And uh, along with the other, uh, you know, uh, I guess uh, high accident areas as well. Okay. So that's one of the reasons it wasn't because we don't really have anything uh, acceptance from uh, Caltrans. Caltrans. And it has to be a partnership with Caltrans True. in order to move forward with a, a traffic light. Correct. Okay. Well, just keep it in the forefront and you're as much as you can. Well, the other safety. thought, uh, oh, sorry to interrupt there, no, um, okay. but the other thought I would add to that is one of the conversations we're having with COG staff now is we're starting to scope out what the traffic, imp the countywide traffic impact fee is, is recognizing there are these little gaps in the county roadway network that aren't necessarily getting picked up in the traffic impact fee of how it was looked at previously. And so, like on Fairview, there's a series of small bridges that aren't big enough to qualify for state funding that are going to need to get re replaced. You know, they're two little two-lane country bridges that when you build a four-lane Fairview are going to be really jarring. Right. And that we're going to get stuck then having to use local dollars to do that. So I want to make sure that as we're building that traffic impact fee that we're actually thinking about these little missing pieces and so it's like even the signal like this it may not be a signal that would ever qualify for state money and it's really locally created impacts that are going on with that is so that's part of the incremental growth you know the consequences of growth that go on that why you have a capital you know improvement impact fee that's out there on the roadways network is this is what it would pick up for those types of things that we should be able to locally fund ourselves but we need to make sure it's in our impact fee so again Putting it into the five-year CAP or even the things that should be in a future allows us from a nexus fee to start accounting for those when we set rates. Okay. Supervisor Munzer? Yeah. Uh, Supervisor Rivas brought up a, an interesting point, I'm not sure, it, it, or thought for me. If the, I'll call it the Nash Road Bypass is not in our CIP now, mm -hmm. if we were to prove, if the city was to prove the closure of Nash Road and we were criticized in the local paper that you know we don't ever get anything done how long would it take us to get to construction of that road if it's not even in the CIP now yeah so the design work is probably six to nine months to get a design put together engineering drawings uh, to go out be able to go out to bid it's probably about a year-long project to go build it to get it into the CIP would be you know any given year we can put it in it's going to be looking at the source of dollars for that and are we using uh, park impact fee dollars are we using some other source of dollars uh, I'm assuming park impact fee dollars and so part of what I'm trying to cash flow right now is if looking at the different residential projects coming online where they are in schedule and what we've committed to of building different projects so we can figure out what our cash flow is going to be on any given year to then say, you know, do we have a gap? Is there a million dollars that's available to go do that bypass, you know, assuming we get an agreement signed here? So that's part of what we're working on right now to build that five-year view. Okay, so, but does the project have to be in the CIP before it even gets started? To, uh, it needs to be in there to go through and start doing like preliminary engineering. Yeah, but as a part of this, we had, um, put dollars aside to do some of that work, but we didn't put any money for construction. So for the engineering part. So we do have some pre-work dollars put into the budget to allow us to get running with it. Okay. It's, so, but we've stopped because we don't have the land. Okay. So can we add to the CIP midstream or, or the, do have we to can come back. Time? The board has the ability to go through and look at the CIP you know, during the year. The, oh, goal, okay. The, okay. the goal is to do it just like the budget once a year but just like the board makes adjustments to the budget during the year is we have the ability to do that with okay. the CIP also. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank right. you, Matt. 
Okay, it looks like uh, if we don't have any other questions with the board. We have covered um, number 45. 45 and 46. And 46. So we can move forward with those two. I'll make a motion to approve the 2015-16 capital improvements program with the uh, amendment to budget unit 3838 uh, with the changes to on the lighting you know, of the tennis courts at San Juan School to incorporate the uh, projects at Broody Park and in the soccer field in San Juan Batista. There's a motion and a second with the uh, with the amendment. Any further discussion? What amendment? Amendment to the. Oh, oh okay. Right. Okay, and it, okay. I'm sorry. Okay, and then I would ask the maker of the motion. Does he want to put a time limit on the funds being spent, or? I could put the time limit uh, in conjunction of the hospital road bridge. <laughs> 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 no, you know, I'll I... I'll accept that. I'll, I'll accept that. <laughs> um, in all seriousness, uh, I, I think the community has shown uh, that they've raised a lot of money, uh, both privately and publicly, and the partnerships are pretty well established. I, I, I feel very comfortable that with, they'll get this project okay. done yeah. quickly. And I feel comfortable, too. Once we start putting timelines, you know, it becomes difficult for the other projects that don't have timelines. And remember, we visit these every year. Right. So if we have to make a change and we see that nothing's happening, they haven't done anything at all, then we may question our decision. Oh, so yeah. I think they know that we're we're serious about making the change if they're serious about getting it done. So um, so I will support it. So, uh, well, I don't know if I want to wait for Supervisor Rivas to get here to take the vote. Any further discussion? Okay, then let's vote on it. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries 4-0 with Supervisor Rivas um, on break. Absolutely. Um, okay. Joe? CSAs. Seven, and we, do, we will have a public hearing on that one as well. So uh, only four slides on this one. Uh, and this is really just to kind of put context what we're going to be talking about with the individual CSAs. So we currently have 27 CSAs receiving services. Uh, the board dealt with annexations into two of those uh, this year. So there's still uh, projects coming through that are um, working with CSAs. We do have, I think, some um, things that uh, don't always get thought about is that a number of CSAs, they voted themselves out of existence, but we still are dealing with several of those legacy. I mentioned uh, Rancho Larios, where we have the uh, sewage system that uh, we're still trying to untangle ourselves from a permitting standpoint. Um, we have uh, Toronto Estates, uh, where we're trying to get that one closed out with some road improvements. Um, importantly, all but CSA 55 have reached their maximum CSA fee limit under the 218 process that they went through. It seems like a long time ago, but you know, they've hit their five-year limit. And so what that in reality means is that they have plateaued on what revenues we will get. And as the board's well aware of, the cost for things continues to go up. And so over time, uh, there's going to be a difference between services we're allowed to provide services, the types of services, and what we're actually going to deliver in those neighborhoods until at some point it'll reach a breaking point and then either we'll vote or not vote to raise those taxes or defund them. And so and that's an ongoing challenge we're going to have here in the county with the CSAs. Um, and then lastly, the water and sewer operating contract that Bracewell has for a number of the CSAs is uh, terming out and so that'll be on your July 21st agenda. We tried to get it on tomorrow's agenda and just there was so much stuff going on so we're working with Bracewell to uh, keep that up and running. Uh, in this last year we did go throughout at uh, Stonegate uh, get all the meters installed. Um, we're claiming 500 hours. We worked much more than this uh, out in the CSAs but that's how much actually got accounted for in our kind of second set of books where we account for uh, projects. Uh, we've been doing work out at Sierra Vista with their sewage system, uh, pumping it out, replacing pumps that were failing. So we've been working with the HOA to cover some of that. And as I said, we rebid the operating contract and the wastewater contract. Uh, so you'll be seeing that shortly. Um, I think there really are challenges, and the board realizes that, and that was part of your policy decision to not create more CSAs, um, is that we've got the fee issue getting capped out. Um, there is a reoccurring problem that I've seen with the CSAs where the homeowners 
kind of think of us as their personal assistants to do whatever need to be done. And we don't have real clear lines of what is an acceptable level of service. So where one homeowner is upset about uh, the height of weeds outside their fence may not be an issue that rises to importance for the entire CSA. It may not be how we're funded, but we are responsive right now to that. My concern is, is um, what that means overall to those individual CSAs, and I'll talk about some of those as we go through it. Um, I've talked about the defunded CSAs that are not closed out. We're incurring staff costs to try and fix those. I can't charge the current CSAs for those, so it's kind of a general fund problem. Um, we are still implementing the water billing systems out at uh, Stonegate. Uh, I think we've gotten the big kinks worked out of that. We've got uh, bills now starting to get out on a somewhat regular basis, but we're now going to be in enforcement mode, and we're really not set up to be an enforcing entity, so we're going to learn what it means to be that. And then the administrative side of things, when uh, Lynette left the county a year ago, was doing a really good job of working out boots on the ground with the CSAs, but the reality was her time, the amount of hours she was spending, really wasn't built into the cost of those CSAs. Uh, we really depended on the road fund to be covering cost, and you know, that's not a long-term success. Uh, this year we've probably under-delivered, so in some ways it's averaged itself out, but on an ongoing basis as we look at you know, the fees, and especially where those lines have crossed now, that it's flatlined of revenues and our costs are going to continue to increase, it's going to be more and more pressure that we're going to face in trying to serve these CSAs with less and less resources. So with that, uh, I was going to do a quick walkthrough of the CSAs. Um, you know, as the new kid on the block, well, not so new now, um, one of the things I built was this chart because um, it really wasn't clear trying to get in that question. So what do we do in the different CSAs? Uh, every one of them is different. Uh, some of them we just pay for the street lights to be on. Others we're off running sewer and water systems. We're maintaining roadways. And uh, as a part of how we've set up reserves and operations for these uh, CSAs, uh, going back to the homeowner who's complaining about the weeds, if that CSA also has road maintenance in there to where we have a 50-year you know, life cycle that we need to be putting money, a lot of money aside, to go through and be replacing roads in that subdivision and patching and uh, doing overlays and that, we're going to burn through all that money you know, worrying about how tall the oat grass is rather than how deep the pothole is. And that's something that I think we're going to have to come to grips with the CSAs. And it's, I think, not going to be an easy conversation where, uh, in some ways, they've grown accustomed to uh, services that are very responsive around that um, and having to put some discipline and find some leadership within each of the CSAs is who is it that our, who is our customer? Is it 500 homeowners or is it a board that is operating on behalf of the 500 homeowners? You know, are we the per person that's trying to sort out the loud voice versus the essential voice. Uh, so there's some work that's going to have to happen, and not having Lynette here makes that all the more difficult. So it's still a vacant position in the department. And you're uh, right, Joe, it is very difficult because I, I was a part of that. We have, I have a lot of CSAs in my district, and they don't have uh, homeowners associations. No. And somebody comes forward and claims to be the spokesperson, and then somebody else says, oh, wait a minute, you know, we want to be heard too. It's very difficult to communicate. So I'm hoping that we can find somebody else. Is that in the planning? Well, that's our goal is we're spinning back up on some recruitments. And so you were asking this morning about HR. And uh, we've actually gone out and done recruitments on a couple of positions, didn't find any qualified candidates. So we're going back out. We're also restructuring uh, the admin functions uh, in uh, Linda McElroy's world to not put that all in one person, to actually split it between two so that we've got some redundancy, but it also gives some variety of kind of out in the field and in the world doing bookkeeping. So we're going to try a little bit different approach to that as how to serve our CSAs better and also to keep ourselves, you know, better attuned inside the building. So that is one of the things we're spinning up now that the budget's finishing up here. Um, from the overall, um, CSAs themselves, we're not raising the rates this year other than CSA 55, and I do want to note that uh, in the original packet, CSA 55 sheet was not in uh, the distribution, so Louis passing that out. That's our newest CSA. Um, that's the only one that we have the ability to do the COLA increase on. <coughs> um, for all the others, we basically rolled forward what we were doing in the previous year, uh, and we'll continue to do that. We are um, going to be working with Stonegate on some potential improvements to their water system uh, that were part of the well project, which is not showing up in here because uh, that's a separate loan and fund pro program we have that's a separate uh, tax 
uh, that they haven't voted on themselves. We are also working on, as I mentioned, the Toronto estates, that they have a balance or reserve. Uh, and they're one of the CSAs that voted to go out of business. And what the holdup on signing a settlement agreement was road maintenance. And so we've had our staff go out and we've had some contractors go out and look at the improvements there, see what needs to happen to get that back to a, an agreed upon state of repair so we can turn the keys over to them and get out of business with them. So that's our goal this year to get that done. And then uh, from the other big piece of it, uh, the operating contract with Bracewell, uh, they are the lowest responsive bidder that came in through the bid process. So um, they show up in several, one, several of these CSAs as the services and supplies big item is operating the water system or the sewage system. So that'll be uh, continuing forward. There was increases, um, but I don't remember, I don't, off the top of my head, what that number is. Uh, it wasn't on tomorrow's agenda, so I've kind of flushed it out, out of my brain, unfortunately. Um, so we have a, uh, tried to account for those in there, but we'll have to play with it. But those ones have decent reserves to cover that, so we're feeling okay with that. So I think the theme with CSAs is status quo, well, maybe continue what we did last year. We won't use status quo. Um, with the couple of little modifications and just recognizing that it is something that uh, is taking a significant amount of time that uh, I think is kind of off the books that we're trying to get sorted out. So available for questions. Just good luck. <laughs> because those, you know, knowing that the administrative funding, funding less than cost recovery is not, doesn't sit well with me because it's supposed to cover everything. But I know that with Lynette's absence, you didn't have a dedicated person. So it was just kind of hit and miss. And so you have to address their their concerns right. and so I hope that that gets resolved well I think it w in the end it will get resolved it's just it's I think will be painful because the homeowners are, we're going to be scaling back and we did that previously where there's not the dollars we just we don't go out and maintain the drainage basin as much or we don't you know mow the weeds or whatever as much yeah. but they have a better understanding of how it works than they did five years ago so Hopefully, unless you have big turnover of owners, then we got a problem. Yeah. Supervisor Patella? Yeah, it, it's a little concerning that the CSAs have always been a major headache since I've been on board. And we, but we did promise these homeowners that we'd have somebody that they could call and at least express their, you know, concerns to, and we could, you know, as a county, yeah. uh, either deal with their issue or or, or we can't but somebody that they could call in the office. Uh, do we have that person? So kind of de facto, it's been spread around. So Ken natel has been part of that. I've been part of that. Linda's been part of that. Yeah. So it is a bit diffused. One of the things that we're actually looking at is, can we go through and do some signage out at the, on the county road as you go into these CSAs that says you're now entering you know, CSA 23, whatever, and these are services that are provided and if you have comments or questions, call, you know, put a phone number there. So at least there's an awareness that there's this entity that exists and how to obtain services. Uh, it's the same with like the light poles that we spend a lot of time. Every week there seems to be a call, a light's out on a street light. And we have to go, you know, go back to my chart. Is it a PG&E maintained pole? Is it a pole we maintain or does the HOA maintain it? Who pays the bill on it? Um, can we go through and put some decals on them that says, you know, this light is funded by this and maintained by this, call this group, you know, whether it's PG&E, us, or the HOA, just to get maintenance, because we spend a lot of time just going in circles, um, reinventing it seems, you know, year to year to year. And I'm not very excited about, you know, them calling the director of public works. Me or, either, but well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the book. Signage is a good idea, because maybe you'll minimize the calls, and they say, well, gosh, you know, the park isn't part of that, so I, I'm not going to call them, because obviously that's not part of the money or the, right. the cost, yeah. I think eventually we have to get to a point where there's somebody at, at a lower level. That's, yeah, that's that so it's an office assistant, and I forget the f official title we have here in the county, but it's an office uh, staff person, clerical type person that we would be uh, assigning half, one person would get half of them, the other one would get the other half of them, and that would be the ongoing contact. So then, you know, it's kind of what Lynette was able to do is have that ongoing conversation. That is our way to go through and keep the cost down and contact level up. Great. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? I will go ahead now and open the public hearing for item number, let me see what number that is. 
47. What is it? 47. 47. Anybody from the public that would like to address the board on this item? There being none, I will close the public hearing and bring it back for a decision. <coughs> Madam Chair? Sure. Mm -hmm. Jill? So as you go through and figure out who's going to get their weeds mowed in front of their houses and who doesn't, will you keep us in, in the loop on that so that when we get the phone calls, we can relay that information also? Uh, we try to do that. Uh, so it's trying to be the normal practice of things. I can't guarantee that, just kind of where we're running. But that's part of why I want to have that service types agreement so that it's clear for the board members, it's clear for my staff, and it's clear for the homeowners that exactly. we need to be on the same page. When we're page. down in the weeds talking about the weeds that we're yeah, really we, we, know we when we should be on the same it. page. Yes. Okay. Thank Any you, Madam Chair. Okay, I'll go ahead and make a motion that we, uh, um, for temporary do pass item number 47, county service areas. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Now, at this time, we can take a little break, or we do want to continue through the items? Take a little break? Yes, okay. There's one supervisor that wants a break, even though he's walked out a couple of times. So, <laughs> Okay, we're going to take just a short break and come back in five minutes. Thank you.
Okay, I'd like to resume our meeting. If we could all have a seat, please. Okay, we're going to go back to our uh, regular agenda, and we're going to start with RMA planning um, section number 71, and I'll okay. hand it over to Melinda. Item number 71, planning and building, um, and as you stated, this is part of the RMA, the reorganization between uh, planning, building, maintenance, and um, integrated waste management. And so um, there's a lot of changes, shuffle, uh, some, some added positions, and some shuffling of positions um, involved in this reorganization also. Um, the planning and building department, um, revenues are at $725,500, and um, expenditures are $1,576,525 with a net county cost of $851,025. And the reorganization within this department is, um, there's, there's a couple of these. Um, we, there, we have decreased an associate planner and added a planning technician. <clears throat> We've unfunded the director and unfunded um, a senior planner Increased the building inspector um, half uh, point. Actually, that should say point five. Um, added a building official and added the permit software to this budget, and we've moved the code enforcement officer that was part of the abandoned vehicle program. Um, and uh, she was almost. 50% funded between this department and the abandoned vehicle program, and so we've um, added her one full-time position into the planning department. Okay, any questions of uh, Melinda on this one? Okay, questions, um, I'll open it up for public comment. Anybody from the public that would like to address the board? Okay, we do, okay. There is a card, um, Jennifer Dosett. Okay, Jennifer, if you could come up, thank you. Good afternoon, thank you for having me. My name is Jennifer Dossett. I'm the president of the Monterey Bay Economic Partnership. And as you look at your plans for planning and building and economic development, I wanted to remind you of some resources you have in the Monterey Bay Economic Partnership. Today, I would actually like to ask you to participate with our organization in three ways. The first way is I would ask you to use our tools. We already have several items underway that align with several um, programs in your general plan, Section 4, Economic Development. The first way I would like you to participate with us is to use our tools. We have some amazing tools online. One of them is an insight tool. It's for commercial properties. And this tool allows us to house all commercial properties and real estate um, plots available in the entire region. So if someone contacts the city of Marina looking for a certain type of space, and you have one here in San Benito, they will refer that individual or company to San Benito as a better fit for that company. And that insight tool relates to ED uh, 1.8 in your general plan. Um, I see that this is something that you would like to do as a county to house a resource online for um, searching commercial property and real estate plots. Jennifer, is this a life person? I mean, well, of course it'd be a life person. Is this a person or is this online that people would get referred to another county or another city? So the referrals would happen with real people. Real people so the tool is something that's housed on our website that anybody can access. And it can be confusing when a company calls you asking for a certain real estate space. Um, for example, just the other day, I had somebody request a warehouse two to 3,000 square feet. And we're building our tool. 
but I wish I could have just gone into my tool, typed in two to 3,000 square feet to see what was available in our entire region. We're not there yet. What we're doing right now is incorporating commercial real estate um, brokers to enter in their property so that we have a comprehensive view of what's available to everyone in our region. Mm-hmm. It seems, is it in our view or your view that does government get involved in, you know, the private sector looking for space in that degree rather than perhaps like ideally the Economic Development Council, San Diego County should, probably should have that tool um, or resource in, in partnership with uh, your organization? Or does it? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a great question. You can go about it either way. One, we could house the information, or you can house the information, and we can share the data so that there are more chances for people to see what properties are available. So for in the case of San Benito, I would say that we would house the tool because you don't have the capability yet. We already have the tool, and so why spend more money recreating one? Um, but there are some cities that want to have more control over monitoring which properties are entered and updating them as they're sold or leased. So what we have done is we've collaborated in two instances with cities that manage their own property listings. Um, one is the city of Gonzales and two is the, the city of Salinas. So their economic development managers actually enter in properties, but it communicates with our mapping tool as well. So whenever they enter something, it's updated on our tool. So that the cities that are not using, do not have their own tool, they can just look onto our general website. Yep. Um, so another resource I wanted to point out to you is our data visualization um, resources. So on my team, I have this great data scientist, Harold Vargas, and he has done a great job at aggregating data and creating visualizations that are useful to organizations and companies to prove their business cases. Um, so for example, we just made live on our site uh, data visualizations related to higher education and research in the area. And there are organizations in Monterey County that are now using those maps to make their business cases for additional funding. So that's a resource that's open and available to you now. If you feel like you need a certain map or graph, we can help you with that. Um, the second thing I would like to ask of you is to attend our conference in the fall. So November 5th, we will have our State of the Region Conference. We are a regional organization. That means Monterey, Santa Cruz, and San Benito. And if San Benito isn't participating, we can't hear what's important to you or what you need or how you should participate with us. Um, so please attend that conference, and I hope that maybe we can get some panelists um, from San Benito. For our January conference, we had Brad Van Dam from Hollister, and he um, was a great resource for us, ended up joining our board because of that conference. So hopefully we can get some more involvement from San Benito. And then the third thing I would ask of you is to join our organization for many different reasons, but to bring it back home to San Benito, I would ask you to join so that we can create a regional SEDS plan. So this is something that has been done in other states across the country. Um, there's a great example in Las Vegas where several counties came together to create a regional SEDS plan so that they could leverage each other's resources across those county boundaries. I know that um, in talking to the regional representative regarding SEDS plans, um, Melinda Matson, I learned that San Benito hasn't done a SEDS plan for over 10 years, but I saw in your general plan that that's one of your priorities for this upcoming year. So, if you would like to submit your SEDS plan and hopefully get funding for the next year, it would be advantageous to complete this plan by October. And I'm sure Ray Espinoza has lots of extra time to work on a SEDS plan. Um, but in an effort to create a regional SEDS plan, I would like to help you create that format. There's a very detailed format online about how a SEDS plan should look, and I'm offering my resources. Um, as an individual to help complete that plan, as I have read through the Monterey County and the Santa Cruz County SEDS plans. Um, one, that would give me a greater knowledge of what's important to San Benito, and then two, it would 
I would hope, in <laughs> speed up the process in completing your said's plan so that you can go after that government funding faster. I was talking to Jennifer earlier, and we, we spoke about this in, in an earlier item. And it was, uh, we thought that it was 15000 to join Monterey, and I asked her mm. it's 10000 So it's $5,000 less, and we've asked Health and Human Services to see if they can help fund. So we're looking at lower dollars. So Yes, it's okay. $10,000 for counties in RD, Santa Cruz, and Monterey have joined. Okay. All right, Jennifer, yep. thank you so much. Thank we, you so much. The ringer already went, and I want to be <laughs> fair to everybody that comes up to speak, but yes. thank you for your info, um, good information. Great, thank you. So, okay. All right, Melinda. Um, anybody else from the public? Okay, I'll bring it back to the board. Move for a pass. Second. Okay. Uh, any <laughs> further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries by vote. Okay, the next item we're going to our RMA Public Works section, item number 72. Okay, um, item number 72, um, buildings and ground maintenance, general maintenance. Um, revenues are in the amount of $43,704 with expenditures in the amount of $783,252 and that county cost of $739,548. Um, and this, uh, this is again part of the RMA um, umbrella. Um, we have added a building and grounds worker um, as the uh, as additional help for the jail, 24/7 um, service. Um, there's been some uh, issues with uh, service overtime, weekend work um, out at the jail, and so this additional person is to assist with with um, those issues on the 24/7 operation out at the jail. They're not dedicated directly to the jail. However, this will add some assistance um, with their department. Okay, any questions of um, Melinda? <coughs> Supervisor Munzer? I, I, I'm not sure if it's, I think it's more for, for the CAO. I know in some of our, in some of our um, workshops we discuss more money going towards uh, maintenance, even maybe hiring out t for a, uh, um, a contractor to, to maintain the buildings. Did, were we able to go forward with that, or is that going to have to be put off for another year? Um, well, with regards to this, this particular item was brought up at our last one of our special board meetings, and that happened to be with the sheriff. So the sheriff's organization actually had a maintenance worker at one time, and then when the layoffs occurred th four years ago or, or thereabouts, um, Public Works actually took this on, the responsibility, and then it became kind of a burden on that um, at the jail because it's open 24 hours a day yeah, and no, with I, regards to response I time. Understand. So this was just one way to remedy it uh, is to bring somebody on in, into the um, Public Works office so that they may have a, a you know redundancy within that office and not spread out or decentralized throughout the county. I don't know if you want to add anything further. I think your question's related to custodial. Is that yes. where you're going? Yeah. Uh, so we have uh, said we want to go back out. We just, the contract we just did with the DA, they just now are starting to get their services spun up for that. Uh, we have not gone back out to bid yet. So we were trying to get the water system and a couple other bids out. So this is the next cycle back behind. I think the question is, uh, if the, we go out to bid, can we go through and what would be the cost for that? And from what we were seeing, we think we can go back out to bid and actually for the, what we're currently paying, um, get some better service level out of that. So that's how we were going to approach that. We were going to do it with some ad alternates so that um, there's l additional layers of uh, services that if you know, it was going to cost more money, then we would talk with individual departments to see if they want to buy that, like the DA office, DA's office did do that. But uh, that we have not done yet, okay. but that's in the hopper to come. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Any other questions? I guess I have one. 
Does this budget include um, somewhat a little bit of maintenance to like the Ag Department building? Walking in there, it, it look, just looks very dingy at best. Uh, uh, is this where there's money available to kind of just do some routine painting or? or there is minimal, uh, I believe it's around $20,000 uh, to address some issues within uh, the county as they arise. Uh, so there's just some there there's minimal amount of maintenance um, in this budget because it's not a capital improvement project I don't think right. it isn't. It's made. but you know I, I think we have to you know especially that facility do something because I maybe I'm it bothers only me uh, it shouldn't but because I wouldn't want to work there and, and and it needs a paint job and and carpet. That's probably why Byron moved out. <laughs> uh, Supervisor Patello, you and I are on the same page. You know, we talked, um, Joe earlier talked about a deferred maintenance uh, fund that we don't have. I mean, if we have $20,000, that is nothing for all the assets that San Benito County has. Uh, and so I think we're going to get some one time money, I'm hoping, from the state of California for um, manda un mandated. Um, mandates that dating back to 2004 yeah. unfunded yeah. if we're going to get this money i think that that money we should start setting up a fund for deferred maintenance because if there's one thing that causes anybody to fail it's when you can't keep up with the assets that you have much like the roads yeah. you know we have a plan now for our That's roads right. we need to have a plan for our buildings and other you know assets for the county so I would like to do that. So mm -hmm. if I can recommend that and get the support of the board that we, when that money comes in, the CAO, that you, that we consider that. So with regards to SB 90 for the, uh, for the unfunded um, mandates, we did actually use that in our budget today. Um, so we did allocate, was it? We allocated five hundred and thirty thousand um, dollars. The latest in the May revise is there's a possibility um, that including the interest, um, it could be closer to I believe six hundred and forty thousand. We didn't, but we didn't. No, you wanted to go low, but there will there may be some money, and it doesn't have to be just that fund. Yeah. We could also uh -huh. get monies from other, on um, you know, on um, unplanned yeah. revenues that are one time only because we certainly want to don't want to do anything that is going to commit us for years right. to come but I really want to look at that yeah. and we can do that we'll bring that back to the board there is a um, there's a few other projects that we didn't um, somewhat plan for we you know we're hoping that'll come through the Dell web project so we've been working with the uh, um, with them this last week and actually for the last year or so and it's getting close to moving forward. You'll be seeing that uh, before the end of the year. Depends on when we would actually see an infusion of money, but it may very well be within this next fiscal year. So if that's the case, right, if that's the case, that then we can use so. some of those funds for such a thing, and we'll bring back to the board with okay, that. Okay, very good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, <coughs> where am I? Any other questions from the board? Comments? Okay, any comments from the public, public on this item? I'll bring it back for a decision. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number 73. Item number 73, Public Works Administration and Engineering. Again, this is part of uh, the reorganization with the uh, RMA. Revenues are in the amount of 257000 to $250 with expenditures um, totaling $877,868 with a net county cost of $620,618. Um, we have added um, two accounting technicians, one for Caltrans bi uh, billing and one uh, to work with the CSAs. Um, as part of the RMA adjustments, we have unfunded the director added an RMA director, um, moved an accounting clerk from Rhodes to this budget. However, whatever work is done 
by that account clerk for the roads will be offset through the roads um, revenue reimbursement. Um, and we have moved, there's a lot of positions that are split between different divisions, uh, general maintenance, public works, uh, planning and engineering, and we removed all those splitting of those positions. And then um, we, and then that would increase um, revenue to that department that um, can be, can be invoiced out to those individual departments. Um, so, so this addition of, um, of personnel could uh -huh. produce an addition, additional revenue, is what you're saying? Right, and, and as they work with other departments, capital projects, uh, road projects, uh, they will be able to bill out to those projects also. Any questions? Or, I'm sorry, is your, are you done with your report? You're done with yeah. your report, okay. Questions or comments? Okay, comments from the public? I'll bring it back for a decision. Okay. Motion and a second, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, item number 74. Item number 74, Veterans Memorial Park. Um, there's revenue of 129,000 with um, expenditures in 90, of 96,208. Again, uh, revenue is anticipated to be higher than expenditures of around $32,792. Um, this includes some restroom improvements and lighting improvements to this budget. Um, and the reason that the revenue is um, increased over last year is we received money from uh, cell phone towers that was budgeted in the general revenue section and we've moved that revenue into um, the Veterans Memorial Park. Good, that's um, where it belongs in my estimation. I mean, if it's coming in, they have this, the towers there, right? Right, so they've so it should come wanted to recognize that revenue okay. in their department. Questions, comments? Excuse me, thank you, Madam Chair. So, so I guess my question is, the 32,000, that's surplus then for the Betts Park? Correct. To that department, what happened is we removed um, some revenue from the general fund revenue department no, I understand to that. this one, right? But you want to go spend it? Well, <laughs> for good, I'm sure. Kind of, I mean, I, I just would, would, we're not going to see a revenue surplus every year for the park, are we? Not in the whole general fund. It was a little bit of a shell game. <laughs> I, I guess you could look at it that way. Yes. That, well, we have to justify why it's zero. We can't just, you know, <laughs> use new clear. math to get there. But, <laughs> but, uh, but, I guess it, it does concern me because, it, um, because uh, I'll probably get myself in trouble. Either the user groups will start wanting that money, to, or or the commission will want the money. Well, I think part of this is. We're using uh, staff that's now showing up under roads and grounds to go through and maintain facilities, and so it's just a where the chargebacks happen. So I think that's a little bit that'll be happening here. That at the end of the day, we're going to be spending thirty-two thousand uh, dollars. You know, it's a wash that we were before bringing mon general fund money in from the cell phone revenue. It was just showing up in the general fund side to maintain the park. Now that revenue shows up in the park, and it's just of how we account for all the staff costs to deliver services to the park. Well, then maybe this, does the staff cost need to be higher? That's what I'm thinking is that do we need to go through and show the staffing side of that a little bit bumped up so it zeroes itself back out? I, yeah, I think that's what Supervisor De La Cruz is maybe trying to say is, is that yeah. I, I, think, I think we're going to get ourselves in trouble if we end up with a surplus in this budget item. We can readjust. Um, we can readjust it so that it doesn't appear to be a surplus. Okay, but I have an I have issue with that. 
And the reason I have issue with that is because th this is new money that is no, it's coming not. in. No, no, no it's, it's not, not just new moved money. Around. No, but I'm saying it's new money, even though it was in general fund, it's still new money from the 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 towers. No. That well, didn't we just sign a contract with them that was going to bring us this money? Just there will be when the second tower gets built. There will be new revenue. Oh, right now, it's this is, this is, this is current revenue that's just kind of moved from one bucket yeah. to another. I we, thought this was the new no, contract, so I thought, wait a minute. No. I'm, okay, we're no. not going to create new new whatever. Yeah. Just, okay. No, we we've just moved money from the left pocket to the right, right pocket. pocket. So this is and not it, the new it, tower. We're not correct. we're not realizing that fund those no. funds yet. Well, okay. Yes. Then we find and say a new tower comes up and it's sixty thousand dollars. There will be. Then, okay. Then, then we need to go. Then in the future, the budget needs to reflect the actual cost to maintain that building. And that's Memorial Park. Yeah, and that's part of I think as we go through the RMA kind of discussion and kind of how we build that. That's one of the things is we took up all the small pieces of positions and moved them into one spot. Okay. You know, the department's got you know four items that are being talked about today. So they're sitting in a different bucket. They're just not showing up in this one. So that's the part of you know the transparency of what it really takes to, to serve this park. And it's the same conversation. What does it take to really do Heritage Park or Historic Park? And as we go and look at some of these others, we haven't really come to grips with that in the past. But for us to really deliver services, we need to be you know count for each facility what those are. And so as we've now moved grounds maintenance over to the road supervisor, superintendent, he and his staff are going to take over that and so i mean he's going to be charging back against those dollars instead of the road fund kind of covering that so it actually it's going to be more honest about how we're doing yeah. things I, I understand all that it's just we just need to show it in the budget i think we yeah we're going to get ourselves in trouble annotating or something to show how we do that yeah. so maybe in the final budget when we do approve when we don't we do an actual final budget approval then we need to make a motion today that we will amend that to show actual costs. Or at least $32,000 of extra costs sitting there so it zeroes out. Or, or well, it could be more. We could be in the right. negative. But if, if, and we, we normally are, how long would it take you to, to, to kind of crunch those numbers? Is that something you could do to have tomorrow? For tomorrow afternoon? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we can do that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Currently, most of those positions are sitting in the uh, maintenance. So that's what we'll come back tomorrow to. And they should and be sitting in parks. And we can move them back into the parks. Okay. Right. So then we, is it better to not approve this today yeah. until uh, tomorrow? I would move to, uh, to continue so we, this till tomorrow. And then this way we have actual numbers. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. There's a, there's a motion to move this. Well, first of all, let me get see if there's any public comment. There being none, then there has been a motion made to take item number 74 and bring it back. We'll continue, continue it to it tomorrow. Too. Okay. In the afternoon with uh, the numbers reflecting the cost. 